You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. Sports Coma with Big Q and the Guys. Telling you everything you need to know about the Saints, Pelicans, and a whole lot more. Welcome. 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 You're now rocking with the Sports Coma with Big Q and the Guys. And we have intense, entertaining, educating, and enlightening sport talk. From your favorite sports family. I'm Big Q, and this is podcast 355 of the Sports Coma. That's right, episode 355. And we are the number one independent Saints podcast in the land. That's right, you're listening to the Sports Coma, dedicated to the black and gold, the Who That Nation, and all. The Saints died hards across the world, the globe, the hemisphere, the flat plane, whatever you subscribe to, <laughs> we here. You know, podcast 355, man, we got a hell of a show to hit y'all with. We got a few, a uh, bunch of news to talk about. We're going to play some uh, general manager, Mickey Loomis. He's going to give his thoughts on the draft momentarily. Also in today's episode... Eli Apple, the Saints decline Eli Apple's fifth year option. We'll go into that. NFL.com. That's right, NFL.com's power rankings list the Saints very high, and we'll give you that information as well. And of course, we'll give you a complete full, as full as we have, undrafted free agent list of play of college free agents the Saints have currently signed. Not quite at the 90 mark yet. But the names are trickling in. We'll give you a complete list as complete as we have. And, of course, like I said, uh, Ken Crawley. Of course, another story is Ken Crawley. Ken Crawley was listed in ESPN as a tradable piece. We'll talk about that as well. All that on today's show. So, once again, give y'all a round of applause for joining us on the Sports Coma. Thank you for joining us, joining us both new and established people of the show. And we're going to get right into it. First and foremost, the Saints had a lot going on, man. I mean, this week, as Eli Apple's fifth-year option came due, Saints chose to decline that sucker. Now, of course, initially, you th- you'll think, oh, man, the Saints declined Eli Apple. They don't think, oh, man, we're going to get rid of Eli Apple. Now, just relax, because this actually turned out to be a pretty smart move, if you think about it. Now, of course, the Saints declined the fifth-year option. On this contract, according to a report done by NFL Network, now Apple, of course, he's a 10th overall pick by the Giants back in 2016. And the big kicker of why they declined it is, man, in his fifth year, this guy would have been making almost $14 million a year at the cornerback position. Now, we love Eli Apple, but I don't think that's what you want to pay for your second best cornerback uh, in the on your team almost 14 million 13.7 million to be precise would you pay that i hear a resounding hell no to all them sport coma family who that nation the black and gold mafia everybody out there a resounding hell no you know if anybody you're gonna pay money to like that as a cornerback you know who you're supposed to give it to but he would have received 13.7 million for the 2020 season had the saints added the option to his deal all draft picks sign the four-year contracts, but the first-round picks have a fifth-year team option. That's part of the contract. And, of course, you know about the Saints acquiring them back in October last year as he sent the Giants a fourth-round pick and a 2027th-round pick for the privilege of acquiring Eli Apple. Now, of course, he's listed as a second starter, the, the starting cornerback opposite of Marshawn Lattimore. But had the Saints had accepted that option they'd have been paying this man 13.7 million dollars for the upcoming year so and that would have pretty that would have made him one of the highest paid cornerbacks so i think the saints 
had a, a the deadline for this move to decline the move was coming up on tomorrow actually on uh, May the second where they had an opportunity to decide on what they were going to do. Now Apple is still under contract for 2019 with a base salary of 2.5 million, but now it's become he's he's being set to become a unrestricted free agent coming up again in next March. Now the Saints already pick up the fifth year option for defensive sh- uh, tackle Sheldon Rankins, but the price tag is going to be significantly less for Sheldon Rankins, which is around about $8 million, which is fine. But Eli Apple, man, we love Eli Apple and $13.7 million is not what you want to spend for Eli Apple. So that's the news on Eli Apple. Before we get into any more news, let's hear what uh, coach, uh, actually general manager, Mickey Loomis had to say about his draft and then we'll finish up our story. Um, um, yeah, look, I like I like that uh, we got you know three guys that were graded in our top seventy. Um, you know, I like I like the opportunities that we had today. Um, you know, with Alize, uh, Alize Mack and and Caden Ellis, and and uh, look, I think we got some players that can help our team. Yeah, I I think at the end of the day, it's it's. Um, Look, the, the quickest route for any of these guys, um, you know, at that position is to contribute on special teams. So until we get here and you know, we've got a vision for these players and yet how quickly they fulfill the vision, you know, it depends on a large part on them. And, and, and uh, you know, we'll see what happens. So you had three guys in your, in your top 70? Mm-hmm. So yep. Like top 70 overall, the we had, yeah, on our board, we, we three of our guys that we drafted were in our top 70. Um, so we're excited about that. Yeah. Yeah, so we're pleased about that. Yeah, yes. Yeah, it was a look an opportunity. First of all, that the key to that was getting the fourth back when when we made the trade uh, um, to get McCoy. You know, we got a fourth round pick back, and that allowed us some uh, to be in a position to to move up and and get uh, and get Chauncey. So um, we're excited about that. That's Mickey Mouse Loomis, y'all talking about his thoughts on the draft. And, of course, big ups to Mickey Mouse Loomis, the entire Saints organization, and may have a pretty solid draft. A lot of people gave the draft Mel Kuyper, uh, Jr., and other people, uh, NFL, ESPN, people wasn't really high on the Saints draft. I've I seen a lot of C-pluses, C-minuses from the Saints. Uh, but uh, they yeah, they received depth where they needed depth. They got the offensive line, and it'll be a battle between Easton and, and of course, the big fellow from Texas A&M they picked up. So it's going to be a interesting uh, McCoy. It's going to be interesting moves altogether. They got the defensive backs to solidify the safety position. So the Saints knew where they were weak at. You know, these other guys, like I said, you have to be careful when you listen to all these other buffoons because they don't exclusively watch any team. They do like a roundabout of all these teams, you know, or you just have certain people that ultimately just listen you know, to just to one team. You know, we follow that one team. We specialize in that one team. Of course, we grew up Saints fans. We are Saints fans. We follow Saints, so we know Saints. So listen to people that talk about the Saints and not people that talk about everybody else. You get me? But anyway, moving into the next topic, we're going to talk about the NFL power rankers. NFLnetwork.com, you know my thoughts on this. Anytime they start giving you all this love, you got to be careful because – I don't like us drinking the Kool-Aid. It, it it didn't hurt us last year in terms of us, but a lot of people picked us to go back to the Super Bowl, and we actually make them right was one of the slogans that Sean Payton came up with. But the NFL Network.com's at it again. They've listed the Saints as the number one team in their, what they call their uh, after 29, dr- 29 draft power rankings, right above t- Patriots and the Rams. They got the Saints penciled in there. And they say the Saints are the top team in the league. Let them let that sink in because it ain't changing. Well, for now, I'm aware that New Orleans didn't own the first round pick, but that didn't matter since the last time out. These power rankers, New Orleans added tight end Jared Cook to replace uh, Jared Cook to the mixture. All the newly minted rookies in NFL represent a collective unknown. Meanwhile, the New Orleans Saints roster is top shelf. By the way, the Saints still produce a quality draft haul despite the lack of picks, starting with the real McCoy at center, Eric McCoy. So, Saints get love from the NFL.com post-draft power rankings over the Patriots, the Rams, the Chargers, the Colts, 
and Eagles and other people. So big ups to NFL.com for recognizing true winners and people that's doing it big. Moving on to the next story. Let's talk about the fact that the the Saints have a, a buttload of undrafted guys coming in. Let's go over there to 2019 college free agents that they ultimately have. This is an updated list that we have from the Saints Wire. Uh, email Emmanuel Butler, wide receiver out of North Arizona, uh, six foot four, two hundred twenty pound, school record holder and touchdown catches with thirty three, has thirty two hundred seventeen yards. Uh, impressive small prospect, small schools prospect, defensive end Gus Porter Gustin from USC. This is another guy that has a big upside. Had a lot of injuries to him, and Saints expecting if he can stay healthy, uh, he can come in and contribute. Kind of remind me of a Haloi Kakaha, you know what I'm saying? Had all these injuries in in, in college, and ho- and hopefully he can get healthy enough to contribute to help the team. But the guy is a is a is a whirlwind if he can stay healthy. Right guard Mike Hernan out of Pittsburgh. Uh, another offensive line prospect, Derek Kelly from Florida State, comes in. Tight end Jake Powell from Manmouth, six foot six, two hundred and thirty pound tight end. Reminds me of this guy, uh, Nate Wozniak, that we had. That's almost seven feet tall. That's really not hitting on anything. Defensive end Corbin Kafushi from BYU. This guy is six, almost six ten, two hundred three hundred uh, seventy five pound pass rusher, thirteen and a half sacks, six tackles for loss for the last two years for a massive guy like that. It'd be interesting to see where he might fit. Kenny Bigelow from West Virginia is another six foot, three hundred and ten, six foot four, three hundred and ten pound nose tackle. Can't have, never can have too many of them. Shy Tuttle was a guy that had big upside in Tennessee. Had a bunch of injuries, kind of threw him down. Let's see if he can make it. And a fan favorite is wide receiver LaJordan Humphreys. He had a great senior season, posting eighty six receptions for eleven hundred seventy six yards, nine touchdowns. He's six foot three, two hundred ten pounds, but lacked the size. He runs a four. Uh, seven five in the forty yard dash, but still in all, you could maybe use this kid like a red zone target. Would be interested to see where Lajard and Humphrey lands. Running backs Darnell Holland out of Kennesaw State. This is a quickster, really quick guy. He also averaged about twenty yards receiving per catch and turned thirteen kickoffs for four hundred thirty seven yards. Special teams guy, defensive end Carl Grandison from Wyoming, another big defensive end. This dude kind of reminds me of Junior Galette a little bit. I don't know why. Running back Devon Izigbo uh, from Nebraska, a power back of the highest multitude. This guy averaged seven yards per carry, had 23 pet, uh, uh, passes that he caught. Dude is a heavy runner. Saints always have a spot for them. Jordan Wyatt, a cornerback from SMU, uh, top prospect, some said, until he had a series of injuries that kind of messed up his late year last year. Wide receiver Deont- Deontay Harris. From Assumption College. Now, this dude right here is one you also got to look at because he was the NCAA All Division leader in touchdowns and punt return, kick returns, and in his collegiate career. Offensive line and Ethan Greenrich from Villanova, linebacker Chase Hansen from Utah, uh, lone stapper Nick Moore from Georgia, and of course the Saints have other invitees: Ed Paris, the former safety from LSU, Reed Miller from Montana, defensive tackle Tank Terrell from Northern Colorado. Kicker Cole Tracy, we know he ain't beating out our boy Will Lutz who just signed a fat contract, but I don't know. Saints trying him out for a reason. He set records, field goals with LSU for twenty with twenty nine, also drilled all forty two of his extra points. Quarterback Kyle Kemp out Ohio State as a prospect. Defensive end St- uh, Stacy Keeley from Alabama Birmingham. Offensive lineman Matt Kaufman from Tolson. Rob running back AJ Ulawet from Ohio. That guy is really interesting. Led the nation in missed tackles making people miss with about 44 of them. So it's interesting to see what, what he can do. Center Troy Bacon from Rocky Mountain, long, long prospect to make the team. And center Elijah Rodriguez and safety Robbie Grimsley from North Dakota State. So these are some of the undrafted guys that we have that will be coming into the team. Hopefully, you know, these guys can come in and kind of uh, help out. And usually we'll see if the Saints add some more guys, but currently that's what they have. Very interesting prospects, especially some of those guys that could probably help in the kick return game as well. So y'all chime in in the sports coma question today. Tell me what prospects tickle your toes. You know, tell me what prospect kind of, you know, put a bub in your head, say, man, I want to see, you know, this guy could really probably help the team. Give me a prospect you think would really, really make the team that could push a veteran or an established guy off the team. Tell me, put that in the comment section and let me know what you think on that as well. Now, going on to the next story, we're going to talk about the fact that ESPN did put out an article 
uh, listing the most tradable pieces that the Saints have in players. Every writer had an opportunity to, play, uh, to pick one player off each team that they think would be the first place person to get traded. Now, uh, I forgot whoever the reporter is that listed it. Probably it was Triplet because he carry he covers the Saints for ESPN. Former um, Times Picking Young writer, by the way. He picked Ken Crawley. Out of all people, I would disagree. I don't think nobody. I don't think anybody want Ken Crawley to be honest with you. His trade value couldn't be possibly any low. I don't know what you're gonna get for him. A bag of chips, you know. Uh, you know uh, what? A couple of uh, boxes of trash bags. I mean, you're not gonna get anything of value for Ken Crawley. I mean, I don't think anybody would give him a seven round draft pick for Ken Crawley, you know, but he picked Crawley. Me personally, I like AJ Klein, but I think that at that price, I don't know if the Saints going to maintain to keep AJ Klein. Maybe that's not something we'd be concerned about this year, but maybe next year. Of course, you know, Mike Thomas, big fat contract coming up, but let's get into the article about Ken Crawley. Now for starters, they're saying the starter for the Saints heading to the 2018 Crawley struggled to begin the season and lost his job when the Saints traded for Eli Apple. He lost his job way before then. Remember, they supplanted him with P.J. Williams. You know, so I mean, but I don't want to correct the man. But New Orleans traded for Eli Apple with Patrick Robinson returning from injury and the Saints resigning P.J. Williams. Ken Crowley's role as the fifth cornerback will be dependent upon his special teams. Uh, and we know Ken Crawley don't play no special teams. So, you know, he probably going to be riding the pine a lot, probably on the practice squad where he belongs. He need a lot of practice. But they're saying that his role as a, it would be dependent on special teams. Unfortunately for Crawley, though, the Saints signed former Vikings standout Marcus Shrells to take the spot in the lineup. And they listed Ken Crawley as a trade tradable piece. Now, Marcus Shrells, probably out of all the Saints signings, Shrells is probably the one that's going to fall way underneath the radar. You know, you know, remember last year we had a under the radar sign and with Demario Davis came aboard. Nobody really was really talking about it. Oh, Demario Davis went back home. He played for the Saints, but he was a key part. He played the entire season. And remember, when was the last time we had a linebacker starting middle linebacker who played the entire season? Demario Davis played the entire season for the Saints. Let him in tackles. One of the, he was a leader on that defense. He solidified the line, smart, running sideline by sideline. Loved Demario Davis. Big ups to Demario. This here, as it will have an impact on the team, who knows? As I don't know it will be as big as Demario Davis because that's a lot to say. But in terms of special teams, I'm not looking at Marcus Shrells to come in and be a guy that helps them in a defensive backfield. I'm not anticipating that at all. But what I'm saying is, is that he is the guy that's going to come in and really help the special teams in terms of kick returns and punt returns. He also plays on a special teams cover team. He goes in there and make tackles, and he's pretty good at that, too. So on a, as a special team level, the Saints address the needs of the team from all different levels. Now, we got to draft the guys that can also help in the kick return and punt return game, too, and draft and draft picks in his draft that play special teams. So it'll be interesting, man, to say none the least. But that'll do it for the show. Thank y'all for listening to the Sports Coma with Big Q. As always, if you enjoy the show, do me a favor. Stop what you're doing. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that uh, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Go to our links in the description section below and help our sponsors out. Go buy something, man. You know, show some support. If you like us, you love us, go to, go make a donation and empower the platform. So for me and the crew here at the Sports Coma, thank you all for listening. We'll catch you later. Peace. Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is the Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Embrace Pet Insurance is more than just pet insurance. Embrace Pet Insurance promises to provide genuine support and certainty when your pet needs it the most. 
with personalized accident and illness policies, compassionate customer care, 24-7 access to veterinary professionals, flexible wellness plans, timely claims processing, and online customer portals. Their values is what makes them embrace. So when selecting a pet insurance company as a partner in your pet's care, you deserve a company that has your pet's best interests at heart. Get top rated and review coverage for your pet today. Up to 90% back on bills at any vet, total protection, pet insurance, and wellness, and dependable claims payments. Get the top rated and review coverage for your pet today. Go to EmbracePetInsurance.com. That's EmbracePetInsurance.com. Check the link in the description section below. Are you a boxing fan? Check out Ring Kings Boxing only on the PRO Media Network. Sports fans are gearing up and saving big at Fanatics.com, the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear. From all the leagues, teams, and players you love, unique one-of-a-kind designs exclusively by Fanatics, and autographed collectibles from today's biggest stars shipped directly to your home. Join Fanatics Rewards for free to earn fan cash on every purchase. Shop now and for a limited time, get 20% off all orders. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. Hit the link below and rep the black and gold today. Who that? Do you need a domain name? How about a host for your website that can work with WordPress? Try Namecheap.com. They make registering, hosting, and managing domain names for yourself or others easy and affordable because of the internet needs people. Namecheap is an ICANN accredited domain register and technology company founded in 2000. It's one of the fastest growing American companies according to the 2018 Inc. 5000. Celebrating nearly two decades of providing unparalleled levels of service, security, and support. Namecheap has been steadfast and customer satisfaction with over 10 million domains under management. Namecheap is among the top domain registers and web providers in the world. They offer a full selection of popular and unique domains along with fully featured hosting packages, SSL security certificates, who is guard privacy protections, and more, all at the lowest prices in the industry. So if you need a domain name or hosting or anything else, think Namecheap.com. That's right, Namecheap.com. Check the description section below for link. Follow the sports hub on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube.